breaking news. Draken, he's sadly back with no team. And there's two ways to look at this, right, guys? It's the whole, who is the dumb cunt out of it? Is it Nick or is it Draken? <laughs> Jesus because, <laughs> let's be honest, right? No, I'm, I'm not sure who it like... could be, <laughs> seeing that one guy's on the bench. <laughs> Not playing, and no one else, everyone else is like no. just living their life. No, that's but kind of the, the thing is, right? Like, I feel bad for him because he signed the year contract or whatever it was, but he was definitely fucked by Nip, but he should have been smarter. So, this is where players need like someone to help them manage themselves uh, because okay. this just didn't make sense. Hold up, this isn't, I've got a better analogy for this one than, than you know, who well, it's better than who, who's the biggest dumb cut. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the situation. The situation is as simple as this, all right? NIP are just a bunch of fuck boys, right? And they've got their, they've got their, they've got their main bitch, right? That's Dennis, you know. And he was like, "I'm going on a vacation." So they're like, "Oh fuck, I better slide in and check my side hose, you know, Macalamity, <laughs> all these ones that go on throats." So, oh, oh, Drake, and we kicked him recently. I'm sure he's fucking thirsty. So then he calls on in. Hey, baby, you come play. Yeah, yeah, come on in. And then you've got us, who are the friends of Draken, right? We're the friends of Draken. And we can see, we're looking at the situation, we're going, no, they're just using you, man. They're just using you. Even NIP said publicly, they were like, fuck, uh, you know, this is just temporary. Dennis is only going for a little bit just to recharge his batteries. We can all see it. Writing's on the wall. And um, Draken's like, yeah. That he's not like that, man. He's not like that. They, they fucking, they, he wants me for a long time, man. You know, this isn't just a temporary thing. He really loves me. I'm going to show him. I'm going to show him. No, mate. You didn't show him. He's played good, but they're still going with Dennis. And now you're on the bench. And it's really sad because... It's you articulated nice. this really well, Chatsy. My because... dumb cunt thing, this was a much better improvement upon that. It's just it's just poor, poor Draken, man. Because like we all saw I do feel we sorry like, for him. But the thing is, I actually thought for a little while there, after I saw, like, Rez was like, yeah, we play really good off each other, and it's good to have him back. I was like, yeah. maybe Rez, who is, like, the best player in NIP, like, alongside Forrest for, you know, impact, that'd be, that maybe he could sway it to keep Draken around. Mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe maybe they really could, as a, as a duo, change their mind, but it didn't happen. And now he's kind of just in a, in a really raw position. So I, He's going to learn from this, hopefully, right? He's going to be sit back and go, oh... I definitely fucked up. The fact is, do you think anyone's going to be able to buy him out? That's my biggest the, thing. So, the, leave, so though, right? the, what's the, the situation though? Like we've the, heard, like I he said a year contract. Stories. I'd assume he'd be able but to. Is, he'd have a buy. The thing is, I think it's not that bad for him because, okay. from what I managed to like understand from the situation, he is contracted, as in he is getting a salary. Oh. But he is he doesn't have a buyout. He can like if someone wants to sign him. They'll just sign him, and then NIP will stop paying him. I feel like that's uh, how I understand. That would the be good then. That's not that's Which not is the end weird, of the Not that bad, but at the same time, he had another team like the what is now the Gamers Legion, the yeah, but come on, Uruguay. Of course, not the greatest team, but at least yeah. somewhere he can play, right? So, well, he's got FPL now and streaming, isn't he? So yeah. make some money on top of the Playing salary. Don't touch and... chess or whatever the fuck. Here's the best thing, right? Here's the best thing. It's like, honestly, it is treated on it. Let's just lay this out, continue it like a relationship because yep. he is he is still now the side hoe, right? If they've got him on contract and he chooses, right? He's staying in this abusive situation where we can all see. But he could, you know, in the equivalency, fucking hit the gym, you know, really start training real hard as a player because he's contracted right so he can be with them at any point let's say they decide one day oh fucking lecro's not pulling his weight let's bring draken in or you know get right well we're getting rid of him we're going to bring draken it doesn't really matter the name or whatever but yeah, could just stay stop there. slamming your desk by the way because your lovely oh, microphone is picking up like boom, oh, shit. every oh, time you there's an earthquake <laughs> uh, but um i i just think that if they if if he stays and he like practices really really hard and he can you know, bring himself to be more of a versatile opera, more of a consistent opera, something along those lines, then eventually NIP are going to make a change, right? So I think that it it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world. And he can do what like Smoo is doing right now, whereas he might get put out on loan to different teams and he might yeah. get one of them and just fucking be sick and own. I don't think that there's any point for him to like... The thing is, where are you going to go? Like, you have to wait. If somebody wants to come and buy you, that's great. You may as well just stay where you are uh, stream, play a lot of FPL, um, get put on loan to teams, tr like train really, really hard and, and, and better yourself in this situation so that if they don't want you in the future, somebody else will. And if they do want you in the future, then you're there ready to go. Unless, you know, you feel super betrayed by, you know, getting benched again or getting, but that's just a bit of a problem because 
this is what we were talking about a couple of episodes ago where we were saying that it would be okay for organizations to have like a sixth player yeah. Dragon could do that well hopefully he can get somewhere maybe cloud nine want him they seem to like to take a lot of other talent every now and again throw people around we got anything else to add to Drake, or should we just move on? Should we quickly wish through uh, all there of There's so much news, so I guess we can just leave yeah, it at we, that. We, at we, got, we got plenty situation. to talk about, right? <laughs> the side eye. Well, so. we, I guess the, the only angle that we haven't talked about is, is this actually going to benefit Dra uh, Dennis, not Drake and... NIP. Well, Dennis, Dennis generally, because obviously the way he left was at like one of his lowest points. He had a couple yeah. of really rough events, so... Um, I guess it made sense for him to take a little bit of a break. So the question is, like, is this actually going to help? Is he going to? Is he coming back a little bit more hungry? Uh, depending on the statement, and obviously, like, it, you can't really take too much away from statements. But he seemed pretty confident, and um, to to say like whatever everything that he did, um, mm -hmm. just go into the news post and, and check it out because I I don't want to paraphrase. Um, I'll link it I feel like yeah, you know, I feel like it was a bit more confident than just like you know coming back from from a short vacation. It feels like. He, whatever shit he had needed to sort out, he did, or whatever, because um, that's the awkward part, because we, nobody knew when he was going to come back, and clearly, not even the organization knew uh, how quickly he was going to come back, because otherwise they probably wouldn't have signed Drake, and he, they would have just gotten somebody, somebody else, whatever. Yeah. So that's, that, that was the question for me, because it did, did look like he had some personal shit to sort through. Um, it appears that he's done that, so... Curious to see him at the next event. All right. Well, we'll have to see how it all goes down for Nip. These changes, see if they can do any better than what they've managed to do so far. Next one is Cajun B to Cloud9. The rumors were confirmed. So that leaves them with Automatic, Rush, Golden, Cajun B, and Vice still on trial, which does mean there could be a potential for them to potentially add another European. They've destroyed their kind of major dreams now with this lineup regardless. So... Cajun B, like, good player. Don't doubt it going on to Cloud9, but I just I just so lackluster by just looking is, at this roster. The thing is, Cajun B is a very good filler player. Yeah. As in, like, he's not going to he's not gonna make a, diff, like, a massive difference in the team, but he's just going to be there um, as a good fifth, right? He's just going to do his job, basically. But he's not going to be a very impactful one. He's not going to change the dy dynamic of the team or anything like that. He's just going to be, a, 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 a like, a good... Like I don't want to say anchor because that's not that's not quite what we'd use in, in Counter Strike, but you get what I mean. He's just going to be there to to kind of hold the team together, but not really um, too much more. So that's the issue basically that I have with it. Um, Cloud Nine are missing some of these bigger names who would make like bigger impact on mm -hmm. on, on how the team plays, and this is not really the move. So I I'm going to be skeptical about this one until I see more. Same. I, I, I don't I don't hold much weight in what they've got as a roster at the moment and it's gonna be really just how this kind of dynamic works together or even how long before they change another player. That's my biggest worry because they just keep messing up, right? Well, like uh, as far as we're aware they don't have the major slot anymore. So it yeah. feels like everything for them is temporary until they, they land on something that kind of clicks. Um, obviously they have arrangements with tournaments that they've already agreed to go to etc so they have to get um, you know players on the board to go to these and the same thing could be s said for um, <clears throat> obviously the fan base you want to have the team playing because then it's it, you know you've, you've got your fans still watching uh, if you look at it from the overall scope of the team um, so that they, they, they have vice in there as well uh, was the, the thing for me is is that now that automatic has to be even more of a star because mm -hmm like how much extra load is put on him at least when there was flusher and kiyoshima in the team like there was a really strong backbone of players because rush's role um is very up and down it's not easy to be like a, a hardcore entry fragger and he seems to do that more often than not and, and your stats are going to suffer if that's your position and you know you're not finding the spacings or the timings um that's always going to be a difficult one and then golden well we haven't seen a lot out of him right because he's been out due to due to illness yeah uh, so and when he was on Fnatic as the in-game leader i thought he was a good fragger like a solid fragger for an in-game leader i didn't look at him as like a anything more than that so for me you just look at it and automatic is the star player maybe cajun this is the first time in a long time where he's played in a team where there's a lot of room for him to to play so if there's a lot of room for him to play uh, maybe he can have a lot more impact. I don't know. It's, it's, it's definitely a wait and see moment. It's nothing to get overly excited about. 
And I think the sentiment is echoed by, by all of us that it is just another one of these roster moves when we're likely to see plenty more in 2019. Yeah, it's going to be a waiting game. I guess at least for Golden, right? You can try and prove yourself as an in-game leader in that sense of like how you can utilize these pieces. But it's just like you still need time to, um, to work with these players. And, and as we know, they, they haven't really kept the same five for longer than something like two months. So, like, for you to actually reach anywhere near your peak, you, you, you obviously need a lot more time than that. And for Golden to kind of have to go up against this over and over, obviously he had that time out of the team because of the, the, because of the, the health issues. Uh, but even before that, obviously, he had, like, several months all the way back before the, the face-it major where mm -hmm. he just had to deal with constant lineup issues. Um, and so it's, it's just rough on him and just generally how, on the outlook of the entire team because they... Unless they actually fucking stabilize for for one second, they they will never be able to to get anywhere where they're consistent. So I just wish whether whether this lineup like is actually going to work like in the short term or not. I just wish they actually stick together uh, for longer and and actually figure out if this is has a chance to work out rather than make the next change in a in a month's time or whatever when Vice doesn't work out or when whoever else wants to leave. Um, as it seems as it seems to be the case with Cloud9 every couple of months. I think this like this happening once again is just a proof that God exists and he hates Rush. <laughs> like since the optic days, since that like Stanislav to Liquid move happened, this guy has constantly been in shit positions, just in, in teams, constantly having a stand in. He was playing with Hazed, with Jason R, with Hiko. Peacemaker calling as a coach. Like, what does this? <laughs> what what did this guy do to deserve all of this? Well, I, I don't understand. He still won a major, so uh, it's all good. Yeah, he didn't. He and didn't was come the MVP, so bad out of it. MVP of a big tournament, uh, E League season two. So, like, has some decent achievements considering like everything that happened in his career. It's just a shame, right? One of the biggest brands in North America. Or the biggest brand, the biggest, yeah, sure. yeah. The biggest. and and they don't have a North American team. And we speak, we've spoken about this at length previously. Like it'd be cool to see them, you know, snap up some players from other teams. I, I think right now, where NRG is pretty good, I think obviously Liquid's in a pretty good position. And mm -hmm. I keep, I think that they maybe missed the boat. I think Envious did a good option by getting um, Som in. Actually, Android's a good pickup as well as like a, a solid fragger. I, I couldn't for the life of me work out why they got complexity got rid of him in the first place. Um, I think that, you know, I always talk about Wardell as an Orpel. I think that, you know, Automatic is, is not, he, he's a fantastic player. I think he's too good to be the primary Orp player. I'm not saying he can't be. I think, you know, he's, his skills are probably all over the shop as opposed to just being pigeonholed into doing that one thing. And there's, there's room for another North American team towards the top. It'd be great to have three. Obviously, over there right now, we have Renegades and we have uh, fucking MIBR who are in a bit of turmoil at the moment or they're in a bit of a mess. But oh, there's yes. still room for like a, a pure North American roster. And I think the players are there and Cloud9 would be the, the perfect place to house that in, especially with Automatic and Rush at the lead. So I also think that the parts of this team would be good to go back to... to uh, Europe, like Golden as a Swedish in-game leader would be good, or even for an international team. And Cajun could play on an international team as well. His, his English is fantastic. So, all in all, sucks to be Cloud9. <laughs> Massively. But, but, like, we have to kind of... They, were, they are obviously at fault as well, because, like, some of it, of course, hasn't really been in their hands. Whatever, Golden, you know, coming out on... or going on vacation, basically, to do with, with health. Um, I'm trying to remember. Well, this with Flush Out, that, that's another thing that they pro probably couldn't have seen coming. Um, so, like, obviously they've had some bad luck, but at the same time, they've also must have, like, look at Kiyoshima. I, based on what we heard, it doesn't look like it was his choice to leave or anything. It was just the teams. So that's that's one thing that you have to look at and, and kind of blame them for for this for this change because that seemed to be working out well, at least from the outside. We never know, like, what kind of attitude, like, bullet players have. And, and things around their personality and everything, how, how people kind of mesh together. So you, we, can't, we, never, we can never know that, but um, obviously they, they've, done, they've made changes of their own accord um, and they have to be blamed for that, for, for the instability as well. So it's just like a lot of bad luck with, with bad decisions combined.